This is NBA Unplugged, brought to you by TheProBasketballTalk.com. It's time to talk hoops with Jacob Noble and James Buckland. And uh, I believe, Jacob, we have our third guest, right? Right, just going back to back, one to the other. We're, no we're, stop. we're just running right through this. And here is Isaiah Cannon, who was drafted by the Rockets in the second round. And um, we've got to say thank you for joining us. You just followed up Ryan Allen and Jackie Carmichael, and we're going to talk a little bit of summer league. How are you doing today, Isaiah? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? We're fantastic out here. And uh, I just want to start with this because we – um, you, you might not have been listening, but for the listeners who have been, we just talked to Ryan Allen, who, you know, he, he's been in the league and now he's, you know, trying to get back. And then we have Jackie Carmichael who played in the summer league and he's not quite on a team yet, but, uh, you're a guy who's drafted. You're, you're definitely on a team. You've met the players. Uh, ha- have any advice for those guys to, to, to possibly get into the league uh, this season, hopefully? Man, uh, just, I mean, I, the only advice I can say is just keep grinding. I mean, you know, work hard to get to this point, and anything is possible. Just keep praying every day, and uh, God got a plan, a different route for everybody. So uh, never hold your head or give up on your dream, and eventually it'll happen. And uh, I was thankful enough and blessed enough to mine happened this year and this year's draft. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited and uh, getting ready every day mentally. Uh, getting ready every day. There you, go. you know, Jackie, you probably just said the, the code word for our podcast. That's anything's possible. We're Boston guys, so every, everybody knows that Kevin Garnett commercial after they won the title. And uh, anything possible has become a coin phrase in the Boston area after that. But, no, you, you said something there talking about the draft and being blessed. And I spoke to you prior to the draft, and, you know, that that's obviously a stressful time. You don't really know where you're going to go. You're, you're just hoping for the best, and it's kind of out of your hands. Now that that experience has passed you, and you're now a member of the Houston Rockets, um, looking back at it, can you talk a little bit about the experience and, and like where were you when you got the call and, and your reaction, your family's reaction, um, and just kind of what was going on that day on, on draft night? Oh, man, it was uh, – that whole day was, was nerve-wracking. Um, I was woke up and just like, hey, this is the day I've been dreaming about and been waiting for, and mm-hmm. uh, it's finally here. I actually went in. Went to the gym, try to clear my mind, just go in there and uh, did a workout with my agent and uh, just try not to, to think about it so much. I was actually at home with family and friends, so um, I got a chance to, to experience that time with them. And, uh, I mean, once the, once the drive got ready to come on and you know, the nerves set in, but at the same time I was I was excited and uh, I knew God would put me in the right position uh, regardless of what team it was or what pick it was and, I was just looking forward to just seeing my name called. And like I say, I was blessed and thankful enough to be able to uh, experience that. So, I mean, it all worked out for the best. And so often now, when we're watching the draft as fans, like Jacob and I are, uh, it, usually the, the players are starting to know now before David Stern or, 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 or his replacement, uh, yeah, Silver, right. Silver, come out and, and announce it now. Did did you get a call from the Rockets before they drafted you? Did you know that was going to happen, or or how did you learn about uh, about being drafted? Well, I I knew about because uh, I was seeing it as the draft was going on that uh, people was releasing the picks before then. But uh, mm-hmm. I had people that was sitting next to me. I told them I said, uh, "Don't tell me. I don't want to know." Uh, <laughs> my agent, my agent actually called me um, right before they picked me, so. Um, other than other than him telling me, I, I had no idea. And like I say, I didn't have no workout uh, with with the Rockets. So all I was going off of was the the interview that I had with them at the combine. So, um, but I knew that I knew they was high on me, and um, I knew they really liked me. So uh, it all worked out for the best, and I'm excited to be part of the Rockets. Especially we got James Harden, not a big big guy, Dwight, and uh, a lot of great younger guys around around them too so uh we definitely gonna be uh a team to to look out for so uh, i'm just looking forward to getting out there and, and competing with my team you know and it's funny because i actually uh spoken with chandler parsons and interviewed him his rookie season the same thing i did with you going through your agency um it's a great way to build connections um but you had a minor setback this uh 
this off season and doing a little workout and you, you had a high ankle sprain. Um, so it prevented right. you from participating in the summer league. Uh, but were you able to go to summer league and be with your teams or did the Houston Rockets kind of keep you back in Houston to, uh, you know, rehab your ankle and work out with the team? No, I, I went, I went down there with the team. And uh, like I say, I was working hard every morning uh, trying to get back so I can at least get a couple games in while I was down there. And this is actually my first, um, major injury to, to have me out of anything um, in four years. So um, I didn't know how to take it, and it was very stressful just sitting over there not being able to compete with my teammates. But uh, at the same time, I got a chance to learn a lot. I got a chance to see the game up close and personal and um, just be able to, to look at it and, and learn that way instead of just being thrown out there in the fire and learning from your mistakes. So I feel like I got a little edge um with with then some of the guys because I got a chance to sit on the side and and watch and and uh, pick up little things what to do and what not to do and uh, I mean I, I'm a competitor so I was I was fighting trying to get back out there and play with them and and uh, but at the same time your health come first and I knew I had plenty more games to play with with 82 seasons so um, I mean I'm just looking forward to getting back out there on the court and, and playing. Yeah, you know, and I spoke to you prior um, in, in the, the draft, and, and one of the things you spoke about is why you chose Murray State. And, and to me, that tells a lot about your character, Isaiah. That tells me that, you know, you, the people that are loyal to you, you're going to return that loyalty back to them. And it, I, I kind of see that what you're doing with the Rockets, you know, you're not going to try to risk yourself playing in some league. You're going to give them everything you got. You're going to rehab. But I did want to make a comment on something that you said, because you said you weren't, you, you weren't worked out by the Houston Rockets. And to me – I think a lot of workouts are kind of smoke screens because everyone's trying to say, I don't like this player, and we'll take you, for example. The Rockets are like, yeah, you know, we're not going to work out Isaiah Cannon. You know, we might not get him. We don't really. Right, and then they swoop in yeah, in front of the team that did work him out. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, it seems like if people who work out for teams, they don't get drafted by those teams because it's all smoke screens and, and you know. Strategy. Some, yeah, because you don't want to give away who you want in the draft, and every team has something different. So I just thought that was interesting that you point that out, that you didn't work out for the Rockets, and, you know, you, you went down to the combine, and obviously you spoke with personnel there. But um, at the end of the day, you know, you, you didn't have a Ended up in a pretty out. good spot. Yeah, you know, you're, <laughs> you're on a team that a lot of people are predicting to at least make it to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, but uh, my, right. next question, my next question for you is uh, what role do you see playing on this team? Uh, you know, they got Jeremy Lin, and they, obviously they have Patrick Beverly, who uh, kind of busted out last year in the playoffs for them. Uh, more notably for taking out Russell Westbrook, but he still he played, played well great. Too, he yeah. still played great. Uh, so where do you see your role on this team uh, as essentially the second or third point guard, depending on how camps work out? Uh, I mean, I, I see myself uh, just talking to the staff. Uh, they just want me to come in and, and play my game, do what I do well. Uh, they like shooting threes. And, and, I mean, throughout my career, I was able to shoot threes at a, at a high rate. So, I'm just going to continue to better myself overall. and Whatever they ask me to do, I'm all for it. Uh, I'm just trying to win. and Like I say, we got a good shot of, of, of winning at a high level uh, with the type of guys and the type of team we have this year. So uh, whatever they ask me to do, I feel like I'll be able to, to do it. And like I say, I'm just looking forward to winning. Well, you bring up shooting threes. And I'll tell you one thing about your game from the tape that I've seen. You're not going to have any trouble – uh, transitioning from the college three-point line to the NBA three-point line, because you're pulling them up from, like, 30 feet on some of the ones I see. Dude, you're just bombing and nailing them. I love it. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your range, and, you know, I, I don't think there's going to be much transition. Do you? No, nah, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, I never really paid attention to it when in college when I had to, uh, when I was shooting them, but I mean, I, I, work, I work on them every day. Uh, so, I mean, I don't think it would be that big of a transition, but at the same time, you can never be too satisfied with how well you shoot. So, I'm always looking for ways to, to get better and uh, to be able to continue to shoot at a high rate. The way that you pulled up for, for some of those long threes in the video that I've seen uh, kind of reminded me of uh, Jimmer Fredette, actually, uh, when he was in college and sort of bombing away. Uh, what, what NBA player uh, w would you sort of model your game after? And this could be a, a, a current player or a past. Uh, I think I got a, a lot of similarities to uh, Chris Paul, uh, just with the type of player he is uh, on the court and off the court, and uh, we're very similar in size, and um, he does a lot of things that I, I feel like I can do. He can 
pass he passes the ball extremely well. Um he scores the ball when he has to and um he's a leader and he everybody loves playing with him and as a point guard that's what you that's what you would want to do and I feel like I have all those characteristics to be able to do those same type of things and to do it at a high level and a lot of people compare me to this year's Damian Damian Lillard. So I mean who knows? I I'm my own player and um I'm trying to be better than both uh one day so There you go. Uh who knows? Yeah, and and when that day comes, I'm sure Damian will ask you to pick up the tab because I know you guys are good <laughs> friends. Uh, but no, Isaiah, you, you know you know what I like you, about you as a player, I should say about your size because the point guards can range from you know we've seen short guys as in Earl Boykins in the five sixes and in the five sevens to you know tall point guards in the six sixes or even Sean Livingston six nine. But I don't judge the height of a point guard. I judge I judge the bulk, and that's why I like that you compare yourself to Chris Paul because you know I can't remember ever seeing Chris Paul jump. I mean, he, he kind of stays on the ground. He, he, he uses the court to his advantage. He uses his lowest entity gravity, gravity to an advantage. And I kind of see that in you because you're, you're a stronger player. You're, you're, you're more bulky as a point guard. And then it doesn't harness your, your speed or quickness, which is a, a bonus. And that's why you're in the NBA. Um, but I want to ask, you know, what has the coaching staff down in Houston kind of asked you to improve on this offseason and, and coming into training camp? And, 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 you know, what are they looking for out of you as a player? Uh, just really just to improve myself uh, in every aspect of my game, uh, get smarter, uh, learn the game, and uh, just the biggest thing, just come in and compete. Um, they don't want me to come in and and just be at all, just the people that's around me. They want me to come in and compete and to show that I belong there. And I mean, they're very high on me, and I mean, I'm, I set high expectations on myself. And at the same time, like I say, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to help the team win and um, that's what my role is going to be. Whatever they ask me to do, I'm going to do it. And, uh, I'm just looking forward to getting out there and, and competing and trying to wheel my way on, on the court. So, Yeah, it's a good outlook. And uh, and, and actually, Jacob and I are uh, – we are Boston guys. Uh, we, we grew up in Massachusetts. So although we're too young to, to have seen him play, uh, Kevin McHale is a bit of a, a, a semi-god to us. Um, the, have you gotten a chance to meet – Coach McHale yet, and uh, has he given you any advice uh, on this upcoming season? Oh yeah, he came down to summer league with us, and uh, I mean he was he was just telling me uh, just certain things um, that he liked about me, uh, my game, and um, how he looked at as us as a team, and some of his philosophies. And uh, like I said, he's a he's a he's a good coach, and he was a great player. So uh, with all the tools we got, and and I'm sure he's gonna come up with a strategy to, to make us win at a high level. And uh, I'm just looking forward to being able to play under a, a great player and a great coach. And, you know, he, he's not a yell-in-your-face kind of coach. And I think I think NBA players adapt to that a little bit better than the kind of college mentality, kind of yelling at young men or yeah. kids in some cases to, to do certain things. At the NBA level, you all know how to play the game. You, you know, you all know what you're supposed to do. And when you know you're not doing it, having someone screaming in your ear time and time again. And, and Mikhail's kind of that different – he's kind of a laid-back kind of character. And obviously we saw the situation last year, the very emotional situation with Garnett and, and yeah, Mikhail yeah, yeah, hugging yeah. and, and uh, you know, obviously the, the, the loss of his daughter. Yeah, we're not trying to get into that. But, um, you know, Mikhail just has a ton of respect all around. And uh, so – but I want to transition this to the, the city of Houston. And I kind of texted you a little earlier today. Um, I lived down in Houston for two years, and I know you've been down there working and training and, and getting situated, getting yourself a living place and – kind of seen the city and seen the facilities. And uh, um, I kind of just want to take your opinion on Houston. Have you found some good restaurants you like down there? Are you enjoying the city? Is there enough off-the-court things for you to do to uh, enjoy yourself? And, uh, and just how are you liking the experience down in Houston so far? Oh, yeah, it's definitely a, a big city and a, a great place to live. I'm from the south anyway, so uh, I'm sure I won't be too too amazed at the humidity down there. I'll be pretty <laughs> used to it. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's a great me. city. It's a great city. It's full of energy, and um, there's a lot of people down there that, that are Houston Rockets fans, and I'm um, looking forward to getting out there and, and establishing um, my place of residency and um, and finally be able to, to have my own place to live in. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, you go from college dorm to living in hopefully a house or condo, something that, you know, everyone wishes they can afford. But I can relate. 
I, hey, we're all there. We're all there. I hate he's the new homeowner right next to me. Um, but I do got to give you one piece of I got one piece of advice to you because I never had. I, I'm from up north, so obviously country cooking. I never had the home country cooking, so I had to rely on the restaurants. But there's a there's a a few restaurants down in the Houston area called Kelly's, and it was started by a Houston police officer. So if you have a chance to go to right. any place called Kelly's with an EY, unbelievable country cooking. I have, probably have you already been? Pounds. Have you ever already been there? No, I haven't been there. Well, I hope hope someone tells you about it. It's a nice little, you know, kind of hole in the wall. It's like six locations around Houston, but phenomenal food. But, uh, no, I, I love my time down in Houston, but the humidity was a little of a cultural shock for me, uh, being in the Northeast where I'm used to seeing snow in the ground six, seven months of the year, and then I'm lucky to get a month of summer. Uh, I most definitely have to uh, try to look that up on my GPS and find it. There you go. And uh, just real quick before we get to the fun stuff, because we do have some fun uh, questions planned, but let's talk Rockets here for a second. Uh, you add Dwight Howard in the offseason. Uh, James Harden emerges last season as a top five scorer in the league. Chandler Parsons has an amazing season. Uh, where do you see the expectations of this team, and uh, do you think that it's a championship contender? Uh, I mean, I see it as a, a championship contender for sure. Um and, I mean, with all those players that we have now with James Harden, Chandler Parsons, uh, Dwight Howard, um, I mean, it's, it's it's amazing to be able to play alongside of them my first year in the NBA. And, uh, like I say, I definitely see us as, as contenders. And um, we're, we're definitely all preparing to, to go out there and win it. So, uh, I mean, this year the expectations, I'm sure they're going to be um, high because we're going to set them high on ourselves and, um, we're just looking to, looking forward to going out there and just competing uh, the best, best way we can and uh, playing together and going out there trying to win it for the city of Houston. It's been a long time for them, but, hey, at least they have a couple of titles. I know there's some cities around the country that <laughs> don't have any titles and they have no idea what it's like to win a title. Um, but we're going to have some fun, we're gonna have some fun questions here, um, sort of related to basketball, but not really. And James and I had a podcast last week where we kind of discussed summer-themed but brought the NBA into it. And one of the questions that got a lot of feedback from people on Twitter, and they loved answering it. And, and the other guys in this, this podcast they had enjoyed fun it with too. this one as oh, well. Oh, yeah. So Ryan, Ryan Allen and uh, Jackie Carmichael enjoyed answering it as well, so I'm sure you will. Um, you are having a volleyball game, and you need to pick four players to join you on a volleyball team. Four other NBA players. Four other NBA players. Which four players do you select? Uh, let's see. All right, probably LeBron, Durant, and include myself or just four? You, you, you and four, so it's five total. Five total, you're one All of them, right. you got four other guys. LeBron, Durant, probably uh, DeAndre Jordan, and probably Blake Griffin. <laughs> wow, Whoa. that is really similar. To, all right, Blake Griffin made it on all three of you guys' teams. There's something and, we don't know. And DeAndre Jordan was on uh, Ryan Allen's team as well. Wow. So that's him. And I think LeBron was on another one too. So, but these are the guys. Like they're they're athletic dudes. They're competitive guys. And uh, I mean, that's obviously going to be a, a dirty uh, volleyball team. And just so you know, right, I may right. I may tell Damian Lillard you did not pick him to play volleyball. <laughs> I don't know how he's going to feel. About <laughs> All right, next next uh, question on the fun slate here. Uh, we, we've been talking a lot about music with these two other uh, guests that we had. What's your favorite album of this summer? Uh, right now it's J. Cole, Born Center. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and that was, uh, I mean, that was also what, right that's now. Really, that's really what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm bumping right now. And it's a, it's a damn good album. I got to admit, I just listened to it last week, and uh, – I became a fan after doing a lot of one-on-one interviews. Everyone said Jay Cole and never gave him a shot. So uh, I did, and I have no regrets. So I got to thank you and everybody else who's kind of turned me on to Jay Cole there. Now, the next question is about food, and we all love food. Um, what is your favorite summer cookout food? Uh, summer cookout? Uh, probably some ribs. I love uh, eating ribs. And, but I'm a seafood type of guy, so any type of oh. seafood, uh, I'm always down for it. So. Uh, Some I mean, salmon can... and mashed potatoes. <laughs> oh yeah, salmon for sure. And, uh, well, any well, type from, of uh, any type of fish, really. That was from uh, Tony Allen's famous game, where as I guess Ryan Allen knew much better than we did. It was against yeah. Denver. We put up 30 <laughs> points, and in the post game conference, they asked him, uh, you know, what did he have for his pregame meal? And Tony said salmon and mashed potatoes, not salmon, but salmon. <laughs> and uh, Ryan gave him some uh, some laughs with that. 
Right, right. And finally, Isaiah, we are uh, we're sort of exploring what what players may do if they weren't in the NBA. Now you you've got drafted, you've got your dream job, you're an NBA basketball player, but if you weren't playing basketball, what's another profession you could see yourself succeeding in? Professional fisherman. There you go. Loves fish. Whoa. <laughs> I will say I went I went I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a down I'm a down south south guy and I was born around the ocean, so and I love fishing. That's one of my hobbies I do when I try to All do right. when I'm a free, so uh, I try to find an occupation in that. Bass or, or deep sea fishing? Uh, uh probably um deep sea deep sea, uh salt water. And it's different. You, know, you never know what you're going to catch out there in the ocean. It's, in the fresh water, you know pretty much what you're going to catch. So saltwater fishing is more challenging than, uh, and it's more fun than, than it would be fresh water. But fishing is fishing. I like both. But if I had to pick, I'd do deep, deep sea fishing. What's the biggest fish you ever caught? Uh, probably a redfish. Okay. You got, you got a height on that thing? Uh, I can't remember. It was a while ago. You stuff it at least? You have it on your wall? <laughs> no, no, we ate that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's probably even yeah, better. That's even better. Guy likes seafood. You know, of course he's going to eat the fish. You, you taught me on that. Uh, but Isaiah, we can't thank yeah, you we, enough. And, and uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you this upcoming season with the Houston Rockets. And, uh, we, you know, we know you're going to have a great season. Yeah. You have a lot to learn. It's a little dry out there in Texas. I hope you find somewhere where you can fish. All right. I, you know I will. You know I will. I'll probably tweet, <laughs> tweet something soon. <laughs> you, right. be, you better catch a fish larger than Vladimir Putin. The, the president of Russia just tweeted out last week. Whoa! He had a big fish. All but, right, I got. They it. also got meat <laughs> waters up in up in Russia. So, right, well, you'll, you'll give him a run for his money. Thank you very much, Isaiah Cannon, for joining, and uh, we hope to have you on soon. Maybe to uh, we do we always do previews of uh, of each team in the NBA. So so maybe you can join us for that. All right, in time, just uh, hit me up. You know how to find me. We All do. Right, we Thank you so much, Isaiah. All right, no problem. All right, of course, that is Isaiah Cannon of the Houston Rockets.